Today we're diving deep into Superbase storage and N8N. By the end of the video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to use the two together. This, in my opinion, is a better option than S3 as it keeps all of this in one place and then you can integrate real-time events as well. And you'll also see it working with a mobile build through Rourke and you'll see it working in a website application. So you can see how this one pattern could work for both types of applications. All right, so first we're gonna set up Superbase. So you'll log into your dashboard, wherever that is for And then you can set up your storage folder. So in here I made a bucket and I checked one on public and then I made one that was non-public. Again, if they're public, you can get to it. People can find it. So never do public unless you're okay with it, like for just simple assets and things. Um, but otherwise we have our public and non-public and I can drag files in there so you get a sense of how nice this type of area is. And it should load up in a moment. So here we can see our particular images. This one's going to be a note we transcribe later. All right. And of that information you could grab in here, when we set up N8N, we'll come back here in a moment. We'll grab our URL and then we'll get our service key. We don't use the anonymous key in N8N. You only, you use that in your web and mobile app, but never in N8N. It's just not worth it. And it's secure back there, but you never use a service key in your web or mobile app. We'll come back to that shortly. All right, let's go over to N8N. The HTTP node, we're going to inter interact with Superbase. Now, let's first set up the, the, the ability to authenticate. And this is tricky because at first I'm like, what is predefined authentication? Just didn't make sense. But what that means is when you choose a predefined authentication type, it really is nice because then you'll see these credential types. And now what this means is that if I, let me open up a new tab here that if I had a credential earlier, which I did, that was the daily AI Superbase, then I can use that in what is more of a generic HTTP node. And so in the end, instead of me trying to come here and then make a generic type credential and then add a header and do all that work, all I have to do is do a predefined one and use the Superbase that was already set up. And that to me was awesome. I didn't know that existed and then I wasted a lot of time at first. I just want to show that to you. So now the HTTP is set up to communicate. Now what does that mean? All we're going to do here is trigger some random image getter. Okay, so this guy's going to go get a random image from Unsplash. So thank them for that. And basically it's just going to grab the image. That's all we're doing here. So let's not worry too much about this area. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when I get an image or upload a file to Superbase, it sometimes has a flaw if the file is already there. Don't know the way around that yet, but I do know what I, how I get around it. And it's basically, I just have both an error and a success output. So in this case, how do we do these things? How do we upload a node to the private bucket or uh, yeah, we'll call it a bucket. Okay. So how do we get this file up to that bucket? So this file is called photo 17058 and we're just going to send it up to our bucket. So if we looked earlier, we made a storage area and we call it non-public and then that's it, it's just right here. And then we see our Superbase has a particular project ID. So all we have to do is say our project ID dot Superbase dot co storage V1 object and then the bucket name and that's it. So if I execute this with a post, we're gonna put that up there. Now let's look at something really quick. I'm gonna go down here in a moment, but I want to disconnect this and run this because we need to see the binary file. So here we have a binary file, it's data. So therefore when I send the body and I choose an ADN binary file and I choose data, it's just gonna take it in and put it into that bucket. So now we have two things there. Now the third thing is what is this binary thing? When you type like this and you have a binary object on your left, you can then do things like dig into it like that and get the name. And then ironically, I don't know if that guy has a extension in the name. So I'll do binary again, and then I'll do data name type extension. There it is. Okay. And then I'll just put a dot. So by the time we're done, we get this nice little preview here of what we're going to upload. So we now have the file name ready to go. We use the binary. This is tricky. If you don't see the binary, you're just hosed. It's just anything can be tricky with binary. You will see it, it will work, but then when you go to work with it, try to pin it or anything, it can get just bizarre. So just remember it's not you. Okay, so in this case, we have the binary file. We can see it here, which is really cool. And then if we execute this, we've just uploaded that file. 
When you get this data back, it shows you, or not does show you the bucket and the path. So you can save that to your database to then save that to a row and a table. In my case, I saved it to a table for processing later on in the mobile and web app I showed a little earlier, and I'll show again in a moment. And that's it. You've now uploaded a file to Superbase. Really that simple. So I think, let's just reload here, and we probably see this guy, 1750. All right, so we have a file upload it to Superbase. The next one will be uploading a node to a public or uploading a file to a public bucket. So just like before, we're just going to do the file name and put it into the bucket, which happens to be called, let's see, let's move that line over and watch it work. All right. So it can't be called bucket. So I'm sorry, it can't be called public. So I called it public bucket. So if we go here and do this one, it should be a little different. So let's go do this. I'm going to execute that setup and you'll see it errors out and that's fine. So I'm going to reword this to be public bucket. And of course, there's just some naming conventions where it saves them. So just like before, it's a lot easier. It's just public. It doesn't matter. We have our thing here. All right. So that is how you upload to a public bucket. Same as a private bucket, honestly. All right. How to get a file. This is an important one, right? So we now have our, our H URL that came with Superbase, our storage V1 object and then the name of the bucket and the name of the file. So this one is a is a PDF, so I can't preview it, but you can get it right here and I could download it, obviously. So it's really that easy to get. You just make sure you have your credentials there and, and that's it. Pretty nice. The next one is sharing non-public. So this one's really cool. We're able to create a signed URL. And basically what this means is we can let a particular user use our, have access to this, private file for just a temporary amount of time. So this is seconds. So if I just said like 3,600, I think that would be like, let's see, because my brain doesn't work when I'm recording, it would be about a minute, 60 seconds. So that's pretty short. But if you had private data that you had to show on a website and the person loads the page, they could see that PDF or you could give them a link to that PDF and have it expire. It's, it's really good, really helpful. So in this case, what is the command here, the request? It's a post. And again, we get to our URL, we get object, and then we get this sign. So sign is the kind of, it's like the API. We're basically saying we're going to make a signed request for our non-public file. So if we run this, we get this particular URL. And if we go to here, I can make it just seem a little bit nicer because I can do it that way. And I'm not logged into Superbase. It's incognito. So obviously you can see it working. Temporary sign stuff is really used all the time. Really nice stuff. So that's how you do a signed URL. Now, if the file is public, then you don't really do much, right? You just give them the URL to that file. And again, it's the, it's the URL that Superbase gave you or that your self storage has, storage, v1, object, and public. Now, it's that public is not part of the name. It's basically, it's interesting. They're basically made an API around this. So when we call here, it then translates into being a request for a bucket file that's in a, that's in a bucket called public bucket. And we're using the public API, which I don't know the details of it, but it just kind of shows you what we're doing with their API. We're not really talking directly to storage. We're talking to an API that then delivers that data back to you. So yeah, so it's just a get request to the URL and inside of there is the, is the path of public, which isn't a path in the bucket. It's not there, but it's just part of their API. All and right, so the net multiple files. This was a really tricky one. So in this one, in when tricky is they have docs. I didn't read them. But if we do a post request to a put, put to the bucket without having any files there, and then we do a send body and we then give it a bit of a body. Prefixes, limits, offsets, sort by, all that stuff. Again, ChatGPT just eats this stuff up. So it doesn't like all of them clawed or whatever. And so now we have a list of files that we could then do something with. In this case, I could loop over them or I could just send them all right here to then go get each one of those files. So you could make the signed URLs for each one. You could do something else with them. I'm going to show in a moment, but you can see them all right here. So now what do we do with this? So many things. 
I will show you a couple of places in a moment that I'm using it, and then you'll get a sense of how it can be used. But here's a good example right here that I use in the back end for a lot of my applications. So in this case, we will get the file from the bucket, and then it's just a file, an image, a screenshot, a camera shot, someone took their notes. And at this point, they could pass this over to, to OpenAI's input type binary, and then you can get output. So I'm like, what is in this image? But imagine a better prompt. There's a lot to be imagined here, right? It's not just OCR. It's just taking that image and reading it, taking a chart, taking complex PDFs, PowerPoints, and everything, right? This is it. This is really foundational. And then we have a moment too, and this is public. So let's go to this one because it's a little bit more interesting. So now we have our signed URL. So this is something that no one has access to, but for a moment we want to create a signed URL that does have access. And then we can use the binary or we can go back down here and say, use the image URL and pass that in. And so we get the same, we get the same results where we gave AI what it needed to do that with the file to read it. Really cool stuff. All right, let's go look at how I use it in mobile and in, in a web app. And so you can see how this can come together. All right, so let's watch this in action because this is where it really paid off. So at first I made a website and with the website, you can upload the file like you saw in the beginning of the video and eventually it will transform and it will eventually load up. And let's see, I'll just dump it in really quick. So now with this guy, what it's doing is it's just listening. So if you separate your thinking for a moment, the UI, whether it's mobile or web, just writes a table or row in a table to Superbase. It just listens for events, real time events, and that's it. So this strengthens the building patterns because you're not doing a lot of complex stuff. You're just listening for events, writing to a row in the table, reading rows and tables, and that's it. So that same pattern then paid off over here because I told Rourke using Expo turns into a mobile app. I could use the same everything. So I told it, do the same thing. Let me take a photo of a pet and then transform it. So when it does that, all it's doing is depending on Superbase in real time events and just listening for that. And then in the back end, thanks to just how great this is, I hooked up a webhook to, to that particular table and that's it. So now over here, this guy will get triggered and it will do its job. It will go find, hey, I, you just gave me a new record. Let me go do something with it. It will change some rows on the table. It will go get the image from Superbase like we did. And then it takes that image and sends it over to the particular services I'm using. And that's it. R rinse and repeat over and over again. The same flow just works so well. Mobile, web, all you're changing is some of the UI elements and you're really telling your AI, keep it simple, just read and write to a database row, upload a file to Superbase and let Superbase and N8N do the rest. Well, these front end applications just wait. And it's really, it's just been really great to do these patterns. All right, so I just wanna show you the practicality of these things, all right. Let's just wrap this up and that is it. Now you know how to use Superbase and N8N with the HTTP node. If you subscribe to my Substack link below, you can get access to these workflows and a lot of other workflows, podcasts, and other stuff that I do to bring all this stuff to you. All right, thank you.